The Matterhorn, located in the Swiss Alps, is a majestic mountain that straddles the border between Italy and Switzerland and looms over the Swiss mountain town of Zermatt. In the 1860s, it was the focus of British and Italian rivalry to be the first to reach its summit. The first ascent of the Matterhorn marked the end of the golden age of Alpinism. It started with the ascent of Waterhorn in 1854 by a team led by Alfred Wills and ended with the first ascent of the Matterhorn in July 1865 by a team led by Edward Wimfer. Wimfer was climbing during that era where mountaineers, mostly British, raced to be the first to reach the peaks of mountains in the Alps and elsewhere. Surprisingly, few of them died in the process of seeking to reach the top for glory, England, and scientific advancement. Today's story, which includes the first successful ascent of the mountain, is a tale of triumph and tragedy. In the summer of 1860, Edward Wimfer, an athletic 20-year-old British artist, visited the Alps for the first time. He had been hired by a London publisher to make sketches and engravings of the scenic mountains along the border of Switzerland and Italy. He was soon interested in mountaineering and decided to attempt the yet unclimbed Matterhorn. He initially teamed up with an Italian guide, Jean Antony Carroll, and in the years 1861 to 1865, both made several attempts on the southwest ridge but each time failed to summit. Over the time, they became progressively rivals. The Matterhorn was the tallest unclimbed peak in the Alps at the time, and Carroll wanted a native Italian, not an Englishman, should be the first to set foot on the summit. In 1865, Wimfer, wary of the failed attempts on the southwest ridge, tried a new way. The stratification of the rocks on the east base seemed to him favorable and a slope not excessive. However, when this route was attempted, the mountain discharged an avalanche of stone of the climbers, and the ascent failed. Carl would draw at the last moment to lead an Italian team of the Italian side of the mountain. He had been recruited by Felix Giordano of the Italian Alpine Club, and the defection marked the end of the partnership between Wemfer and Carl. After Corolla defected to Giordano, Giordano snatched up the best guides in Zermatt and left the mountain to plan his expedition. Wimfer rolled up his tent, faked his luggage and hastened to Zermatt to reach the summit from their side, but he could find no photos and guides in the town. He networked around the town and put together a fatal team of climbers which included Lord Francis Douglas, Peter Togwalder and his sons, Peter and Joseph, Michelle Cruz, Chol Hudson, and Douglas Hedo. They stayed for the night at Monte Rosa Hotel at Zermatt. The 40 set up from Monte Rosa Hotel on 13 July 1865 at half past five in the morning. The eight members included Peter Togwalder and his two sons, Peter and Joseph, who were acting as porters. At 8.20 am, they reached the chapel at Schwarzi, where they fact up some materials that was left there. They continued along the ridge and at half past 11, reached the base of the peak. Then they left the ridge and proceeded for half an hour on the east face. Before 12 o'clock, they had found a good position for the tent, and at a height of 3,380 meters, they set up a camp for the night. This would serve as their base camp. Meanwhile, Michel Cruz and young Peter Togwalder went on to explore the route, in order to save time on the following day. They turned back before 3 p.m., reporting that the ridge offered no great difficulties. They passed the remaining hours of daylight in basking in the sunshine, sketching and collecting. When the sun went down, they returned to the tent to arrange for the night. Hudson made tea, went for coffee, 
and then each one retired to his blanket bag. The Chagwalders Lord Francis Douglas and Wemfer occupied the tent and the others slept outside by preference. On the morning of 14 July 1865, they assembled together outside the tent and started directly at dawn. Young future Trogolder came on with them as a guide, and his brother Joseph returned to Zermatt. The seven remaining men followed the route which had been explored on the previous day and in a few minutes came in view of the east base. The whole of this great slope was now revealed, rising for 3,000 feet like a huge natural staircase. Some forts were more and others were less easy, but they were not once brought to a halt by any serious obstruction. For the greater part of the way up there was, indeed, no occasion for the roof. They went up unroofed and at 6.20 am reached an altitude of 12,800 feet above sea level. After a half hour break, they proceeded until 9.55 am, when they stopped for 50 minutes at an elevation of 14,000 feet. They had arrived at the foot of the much steeper upper peak that lied above the shoulder. Because it was too steep and difficult, they had to leave the ridge for the north face. They crossed over the ridge line to the north face and ascended until the slope eased off. At this point of the ascent, the less experienced Haro required continual assistance. Having overcome these difficulties, the group finally arrived near the summit. The slope gradually eased off and when they saw that only 200 feet of easy snow remained, Michel Cruz and Wemfer detached themselves and reached the summit in a neck and neck race at 1.40 pm. Thus, the Matterhorn was finally successfully climbed. After checking for any evidence that the Italians were there before them, when for looking over a cliff, spotted Carl's party on the opposite ridge, still 200 meters below the summit and negotiating the most difficult parts of the ridge. Wemfer and Michel Cruz yelled and four stones down the cliffs to attract their attention. Carl then spotted them on the summit. And after realizing they had successfully climbed, he accepted his defeat and turned around. It was a bad day for Carol and his team. Wimfer, after all, gained the victory over the unfortunate Carol. Wimfer was desperate and, when seeing Carol climbing the mountain, tried his luck on the Zermatt slope. Carol and many more considered the ascent from Zermatt's side absolutely impossible, and that's why they were easy in their minds. On the 11th of July 1865, Carl fished his tent at a certain height on the mountain. The weather was bad in the next few days and it even snowed on the mountain. On 14th of July, the weather was fine. Carl and his team might have reached the top when suddenly, at about 2 p.m., they saw Wimfer and others already on the summit. Carl and Fati gave up on their attempt and turned around. Wimfer and Fati stayed an hour on the summit. Then they started their treacherous descent. They descended in a roof line with Michel Cross Post, followed by Douglas Haddo, Charles Hudson, Lord Francis Douglas, Peter Togwalder Sr., then Wimfer, and Peter Togwalder Jr. lost. They climbed down with great care, only one man moving down at a time. When they were barely an hour from the summit and were all on the roof, Haddo slept and fell on Cruz who was in front of him. 
Cruz, who was unprepared, was unable to withstand the shock. They both fell and fell down Hudson and Douglas. On hearing Cruz shout, Wimfer and Tugwalder were able to secure themselves by the time the rope caught them. And for a few short moments, they stood firm and held the men below them, but then the rope was broke under Tugwalder. Wimfer saw them slide down the slope, trying with convulsive hands to stop themselves, falling from rock to rock and finally disappearing over the edge of the precipice and fell to their deaths. For half an hour, the survivors remained on the spot without moving a single step. They were paralyzed by terror, cried like in fans and trembling. Later, they composed themselves, fixed some rope to the rocks, and resumed their descent. They finally reached a safer place on the ridge towards 6 p.m. They looked for traces of their companions and cried to them but in vain. After having seen a curious weather phenomenon at the far of the arch and two crosses, they continued the descent and found a resting place at 9.30 p.m. They resumed the descent at daybreak and reached Zermatt on the morning of Saturday, the 15th of July. On Saturday, July 15, a group of people from Zermatt had started to ascend the heights above the Zermatt Valley, which commanded the plateau of the Matterhorn Glacier. They returned after six hours and reported that they had seen the bodies lying motionless on the snow. They proposed that the rescuers should leave on Sunday evening so as to arrive upon the plateau at daybreak on Monday. The next day at 8.30 a.m., after having passed the Serex of the Matterhorn Glacier, Wimfer and others reached the top of the plateau. The broken feces of Michelle Cruz, Charles Hudson, and Douglas Hedo were recovered from the glacier, but a boot, gloves, and a belt were all that was found of Lord Francis Douglas. Hudson's watch had stopped at 3.45 p.m. The bodies were brought down later on Wednesday, 19 July, after an order of the administration. This task was done by 21 men from Zermatt. Cruz, Hedo, and Hudson were buried on either side of the Zermatt church. The body of Douglas was not found. In the aftermath of the tragedy, it was discovered that the rope between the survivors and the four men that fell to their death was the oldest and weakest they had brought with only meant as a reserve. This is why it broke under the weight of the four men. The survivors couldn't say why that rope had been used instead of a stronger one. It was most likely a simple oversight, which could have been meaningless had the men not slept and fallen the way they did. Wemfer had then to answer grave charges of responsibility and the accusation of having betrayed his companions. An inquiry presided by Joseph Clemens was instituted by the government of the canton of Valais. The guide Peter Trogwalder was charged, tried and acquitted. The accident was long discussed in the media and Switzerland and abroad. Newspapers all over the world reported the tragedy and no other Alphine even had to that date ever caused more headlines. Wimfer's expedition is a tragic tale that highlights the dangers of mountaineering and the outcome is fraught with what-ifs. What if the correct ropes were used to tie all the members together? What if the team had tied into the rocks along the way as a safety precaution? What if Hedo hadn't slept in the first place? What if he slept but the rope had held? 
These questions are easy to ask after the fact, but it is suspected that the elation of reaching the summit, combined with tired muscles and minds, made it much easier to mix up the ropes and to miss a stiff. The business of climbing mountain is a dangerous one. And the first ascent of the Matterhorn is a stark reminder of this. It's a testament to the power of mountains and these men decided to risk their lives in the pursuit of the Matterhorn summit. They reached it, thus cementing their names into the history books, but some of them never returned to the valley below. Michel Cruz, Douglas Hedu, Charles Hudson and Lord Francis Douglas were forever be linked to the Matterhorn, both for their triumph at the summit and the tragedy that soon followed. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment. If you want to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel.